Hello folks, two years ago I made a review of the video card 4090 connected via Thunderbolt 3 4 port to Surface Pro 9. Today I made a slight upgrade to RTX 5090 and the connection will be using USB-C 4 port which appears to be quicker to Samsung 8K display. So here is the setup. Microsoft Surface Pro 9, one terabyte version, with an upgrade to a new NVMe drive from Corsair MP600 Mini. This is the second revision, which is a lot faster, and this is perfect match for the laptop device. So here is the stand. This is vertical version. There are also horizontal versions of the dock station. I had to buy angled connections for the display output and also for the power cord. The power supply I use is exactly the same I used two years ago and it's fully compatible. I also bought the adapter, angled adapter, so that not much wire is here. And got the connection to Samsung 8K display. This is the exact model of the dock station I bought. You can find it easily on the market. The manufacturer is ADTV. Uh, the connections are 8K resolution, 60 Hz, cannot do anything more for this resolution, 10-bit RGB, HDR. Here are more details. This is just to confirm. So this is the graphic card details. As you can see, I've overclocked it a bit, both on GPU and uh, on the memory. Please note that resize resizable bar is enabled. This is a tricky point, because usually it can be enabled or disabled, most likely disabled. So the trick is to connect Thunderbolt port to the port which is down a bit. In this connection, it's always enabled. At least it's so for me. So we will keep it open for sensing. So this is full spec. This is to confirm I've got upgrade to Corsair and the mini drive. It's running full speed. And let's do a few benchmarks. I will use the old game Company of Heroes 2. I will also use two new titles. So let's make the benchmarks. First one Company of Heroes. Mm. All settings in all games are set to full.
So we've got the results. This game does not use DLSS technology, so it's a pure force and pure performance of the new video card. That's quite a significant improvement. You can compare to my previous review. That's not bad. And maximum FPS, I think it's just related to the maximum uh, what can be output to this display. At least it's pretty close to 60 Hz. Let's move on to another title. And before that, let's check the power consumption. So, what do we have on power consumption? GPU clock. The maximum reached is quite high, above 3 gigahertz. And let's check here, power consumption. That's more than 111 percent. What's uh, power draw? Wow, that's a lot more than the, this spec. In fact, I made it 600, uh, 600 watts via MCI afterburner, but that's almost 40 watts more. I hope my connection doesn't burn. Looks safe, no smell. Okay, let's move on to the second title Indian Jones. So what do we see here? We see quite nice picture. Lots of details. And yeah. I disabled V-Sync. You can see the settings here as well. So it's DLSS on. RT on, HDR on. It produces a bit tearing during the gameplay, so uh, actually for gameplay it's better to make V-Sync on, then it feels smooth and no tearing. But for benchmark I turned it off. I will just show you the first chapter, how it plays and how it feels. Let's do a bit of walk. As you can see, quite smooth. Okay. 
still about 70 fps this is full field of view maximum Now it's slightly below 70 fps, like 60, 66 in the forest, look at the light. So yeah, here's the idea on the performance. Let's check the next title. The third title will be Kingdom Come, second part. Just I have to add that uh, Indian Jones game, yes, it shows high FPS. But during the cutscenes, it still drops like to something like 30, 25 FPS. Don't know why, but that's the fact. So we'll be in the beginning of the game as well. So everyone can check on their machines. The load times are faster than to the previous NVMe device, so that upgrade makes sense for me. So yeah, what we have above 30 FPS, 29, 30. The game still feels smooth. No tearing whatsoever, all maxed out. Let me show you the settings. These are experimental, basically, this is the maximum possible in this game. Field of view 95%, 85%, so 95%. Hmm. So, yeah. DLSS 4 and Transformer Quality Mode So FPS range vary from 30 to 40 and that's very stable Cast scenes or the gameplay and you know, this is playable. Very smooth. Actually feels better than Indian Jones overall. Maybe because of the engine. Unreal engine. The picture quality is awesome. No frame drops, very stable. So, okay, for this game, let's check the power consumption and the clock speaks. For the clock 
its maximum or we got even higher almost 3.1 gigahertz this is the curve It's the same. Okay, let's check the temperature. This is the open design. Actually, CPU <laughs> 100, okay. Surface was doing its best. Okay, and GPU. Let me find it. Oh! Quite, quite low, 72 degrees, maximum GPU temperature, thanks to its open design. Let's see memory temperature. That's 10 degrees higher than GPU. But remember, I overclocked the memory as well. Check memory control control world maximum only 40 uh, 54 percent. By the way, GPU cheap power draw about 250 watts. That's more than twice less than the whole board. Thank you for watching my review, I hope you liked it, if you did, press like. Also you are free to make any comments or ask questions, I will reply to all of them. And of course, see you next time, bye bye.